Thank you very much to the IEC for the invitation to present about the mechanisms for the prevention of atopic dermatitis. I'd like to acknowledge funding from many of the major pharmaceutical and cosmetic companies internationally. And the most important part of uh, my presentation are teams. I particularly like to uh, acknowledge Simon Danby and the Skin Barrier Team at Sheffield Dermatology Research. It's a wonderful time to be involved in AD research. We not only have many new therapies, but also incredible new biomarkers. And this is an example of a way to take a biopsy of a baby's skin with a laser probe, uh, which means we can take uh, images from the day a baby's born and look how products interact with their skin. So this we know so well, the course of atopic dermatitis. Beautiful work from Alan Irvine, Erwin McLean and colleagues identified changes in the filaggrin gene that predispose to atopic dermatitis and give a skin barrier defect. The environment then interacts, such as soap and detergents, the barrier breaks down more, subclinical inflammation, mild AD and severe AD with allergen penetration and the atopic march. Back in 1991, my long-term collaborator and mentor, Professor Sir Gordon Duff, produced this slide, which we've adapted to AD. He said back in 1991 that the future of medicine was prevention and that we should move away from current medicine where we just treated diseases to move earlier and earlier to try and prevent them by identifying genetic susceptibility. And this is what we were all inspired to do in AD prevention. And many of us around the world over the past 15 years have dedicated a significant amount of our time looking at the effect of emollients and washed products on babies with a genetic predisposition to AD to see if we could prevent the AD developing. And this was the pilot trial of the BEEP, which uh, led by Hal Williams, publication led by Eric Simpson. This pilot trial had circa 100 babies. And as with other pilot trials, small pilot trials using emollient intervention, it showed a significant reduction in AD in babies treated with emollients from birth. All of the other pilot trials showed a similar reduction, about a 50% reduction in AD in babies treated with emollients from birth. But this was only a pilot trial. Then groups around the world, and here's the BEAT trial, led by Hal Williams and the publication led by Joe Chalmers, published earlier this year, reported almost 1,400 babies treated with emollients from birth. And there was no difference, absolutely no difference. And I haven't got time to show the data, but there was a suggestion, an insufficient power to demonstrate absolutely, that allergies to foods may actually be increased in the emollient intervention group. A similar large PREVENT AD and allergy trial from Scandinavia reported its emollient AD outcomes also in the same edition of The Lancet and showed exactly the same. No reduction in AD in the emollient treated group compared to control. Unfortunately, COVID prevented them from uh, achieving analysis of their allergy outcomes, and this is hoped for later this year. So we see a big difference between the pilot trials, small trials, shorter duration, circa 100 babies, and the large, circa 1400 babies and more, AD prevention trials showing no difference in emollient compared to control. So what do babies think of these results? 
Well, their response is summed up by this slide. They're confused. One of the big problems of virtual lectures is you can't hear the audience or see the audience. But I can imagine your smiles and laughter. Uh, this picture came from uh, our great collaborator, Tina Lavender, who's the head of midwifery in Manchester. And we've worked on looking at babies from birth and multiple interventions over the years. Confusion. We are indeed confused with these results. They were not what we expected. However, they are very, very important findings. The night before Joe and Howe uh, released the results, I emailed Howe and said, whatever the results, positive or negative, they will be a landmark. And I believe that now even more than I believed it then. These apparently negative results are extremely important in our understanding of the skin barrier and how it develops in a baby and how topical formulations interact with that skin barrier. So why did the BEEP and PREVENT ADAL trial show no benefit for emollient? Were the emollients not a sophisticated enough formulation? Well, Simon Danby and myself worked with Joe and Hal and the whole BEEP team to select the emollients for the BEEP trial. So this is a graph of transepidermal water loss against tape strip, and it's a measure of skin barrier integrity. The higher the transepidermal water loss, the greater the skin barrier damage. Here you can see non-lesional AD, a very high transepidermal water loss, as the skin strips are uh, removed. Here is the control, uh, a volunteer with a history of AD, but no current AD. And then here we have emollients. And look at this one, this is aqueous cream. Aqueous cream is negative. It damages the skin barrier. So it's the last thing we would want to treat AD or try and prevent AD. This is Diprobase and this is double base. Diprobase has a slight negative effect and double base a slight positive effect on the skin barrier. And so at that point in time, back pre uh, full beat trial, we selected these two emollients because they were low cost and they didn't appear to be very damaging like aqueous cream. Diprobase is a very basic emollient. Double base is basic plus one humectant glycerin. This is a more sophisticated emollient called CeraVe. It contains, in addition to all the other ingredients, ceramides and fatty acids. And this is a trial called Restore, which Simon Danby led in our group. And here we compare zero base with CeraVe in adults, not in babies, with a history of AD. And this is using an imaging technique called infrared spectroscopy, where we can image the lipids in the skin. And you can see that the zero base is damaging the lipid lamellae of the barrier, and the CeraVe is repairing it. And this is illustrated graphically. So, Damage with zero base, repair with CeraVe. This is adult skin, and it's patients with a history of AD not currently flaring. So what would happen if we use CeraVe in an AD prevention trial rather than Diprobase? Well, Eric Simpson is currently leading a trial using CeraVe and unfortunately paused because of COVID. Hopefully we will know that results maybe later this year or early next year. That will be a very, very important uh, outcome to try and see if differences in formulation were the reason why the BEAT trial and PREVENT ADAL showed a negative effect. Perhaps the formulations were too basic, but can we extrapolate from adult skin to baby skin? 
So the next question is, would any emollient applied to the skin of a baby from birth have a negative effect? Beautiful work from uh, Janet Nikolovsky, Yorgos Stamatis and colleagues has shown that the skin barrier in a neonate is completely different from an older child and an adult. It's 20% thinner, uh, epidermis, 30% thinner stratocornea, uh, reduced NMNF, elevated skin pH, abnormal lipid lamellae. Many changes, completely different skin barrier. And Simon Davy has illustrated this uh, with a cartoon here, where you can see the adult skin barrier is thick and resilient and preventing allergen penetration. While the infant skin barrier is very thin and vulnerable in a normal baby. But it's dynamic. It's not just thin and vulnerable, it's changing. And Simon's illustrated here, barrier function with age. Here you can see a normal baby and their barrier function gradually improving. Six months, 12 months, and by 18 months, we get the same barrier function as a two-year-old, a four-year-old. If we had a genetic predisposition to AD, mild AD, we would see perhaps this sort of line, very gradually improving, but much slower, AD developing and maybe eventually re reaching normal, growing out of AD three, four or later. Predisposition to severe AD, perhaps never ever re recovering normal barrier function. Negative influences are soap and detergents and positive we thought were emollients, but perhaps because the barrier is developing so quickly, the effects of products on it are completely different from those we see in adult skin or even in skin of a child two or three years old. There is now so much work to do to try and understand how we influence the development of the skin barrier in a baby and how this is so different from older children and adults. So in conclusion, the future of AD is still prevention But there are many big questions. Was the emollient formulation not sophisticated enough? We do not know yet. Eric Simpson's trial using CeraVe, the Pebbles trial using EpiSaram will help us answer this question because they use more sophisticated emollients than we used in the BEAT trial. But perhaps anything we put on a developing baby's skin because it's developing and dynamic may have a negative effect and perhaps we need to completely rethink how we prevent AD in contrast to treating it. And over the next few years we all look forward to resolving the baby's confusion. Thank you very much for your attention.